Damn it out. <laughs> Except now you've spoiled it for everybody. Well, we I, mean, I assume we're going to... We'll see if we leave this in. We'll see if we leave this <laughs> uh, What's up, awesome. everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I am your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. Jared Petty, Scoop. and Marty Sleva. Prince. Obviously, we're back in the podcast room this week. All of our producers bounced to New York Comic Con. There's no one to us. shoot us in the studio. But... The show must go on yeah. is a phrase that I made up and I, I like to say. So, yeah. Did you sing about it in Mulan it's very Rouge? Very applicable here. Mulan Rouge didn't make it up either. No, I was just wondering if you sang about it. Were you walking Did down I? the aisle? I was yeah. not in. You're not Ewan McGregor? Not I thought film. it might have been you. I wasn't sure. Mulan Rouge. All right. Uh, we got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about 4K. Mm-hmm. That stands Whoa. for 4,000. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's kind of 4,000 4- TVs or sales are up. Why is it at 4,000 TVs? Uh, we got to talk about what is this topic about? Um, man, I can't even know. But there's going to be another topic after we talk about <laughs> what? 4K. Very, it's very mysterious. But first, this week, <laughs> Phil Spencer of of Microsoft Xbox, yes. right. yeah, made Apparently. some comments about the uh, Xbox Scorpio mm-hmm. and what its price may or may not be, and whether mm-hmm. or not we should care about the price. <laughs> yeah. But some of his comments are a little confusing to me, and I was wondering if you oh. guys would help translate. Yeah, okay. I Phil mean, Spencer's it, almost for me. certainly not. Here but we we'll do our best. Here we go. <laughs> Ready. Uh, basically, our headline was that we, we Phil Spencer says we shouldn't worry about the price of, right. the, of the Xbox Scorpio, yeah. which what tells us what that it's not going to be insane. Yeah. It's not going to be like a Neo Geo. I no. think the exact quote was, "Don't even worry your pretty little head about it." That I don't think that exact that's not quote. Is that the quote at all? Really? Yeah. What I think the doing? translation is. You have a headache? <laughs> no, no. I'm, 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 I'm translating it. Please buy Scorpio. Mm. That's the translation. Yeah. That's, that's actually that probably one. pretty accurate. Yeah. Please buy Scorpio. He says, the Xbox One S, which is out now, mm-hmm. and the Scorpio were developed in parallel. And they thought about the price performance of what we wanted to hit with the Scorpio relative to what we were going to be able to do with the S. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Please buy Scorpio. I mean, yeah, it's. I, I think it is a, a continuation of what they... Did at their E3 conference where they were very much at the end. They announced they, they showcased One the S and they showcased Scorpio, <laughs> but they were like, "Hey, we're not leaving anyone in the dust. If you have a launch Xbox One, you're yeah. still going to play all the games. You're going to get to play Gears of War Five and Halo Six and the situation that comes is online. it's it's incredibly confusing to me. And I'm you know super happy to uh, just sort of say that I was wrong. I mean, at E3, my analysis was they announced, "Hey, a year from now, we're going to have a way more powerful Xbox, everybody." Mm-hmm. And my thought was, why would anyone buy an Xbox One now? Why would yeah. anyone buy one in the next 12 months? Like, And I still kind of don't understand the logic of people that are jumping into the Xbox One now. Why wouldn't you want to wait for the Scorpio? But, you know, again, I, I uh, didn't get that one right. Uh, people are totally buying the yeah, Xbox One. Yeah, the One S is yeah. selling really well. Yeah, been, I, they've I, outsold the PS4 a few mm-hmm. months in a row. I, I'm with you. I, I, have, I do not understand why anybody would buy an Xbox One before Scorpio. I don't get it. I mean, I understand that there's a small sliver of people that, uh, y- you know, either don't know or don't care that, you know, an incremental upgrade is coming mm-hmm. a year from now and really want to play Gears of War 4 now or Forza Horizon 3 is excellent. You know, they're just now is the right time for them to jump in for it to be the best-selling console and for that strategy to really be yeah. working for Xbox is a I surprise mean, to me. With that, I, I agree with you, but to play devil's advocate with that logic, why would anyone ever buy an iPhone? <laughs> it's because... Six months down the road, there's going to yeah. be a better one. Uh, I, always, that's why I, That's why I switched to Android. Oh, yeah, because they don't do that. No, yeah. they don't do they that. Don't, they just never, explode never in your face and aren't allowed in the place. No, I mean, I think, <laughs> I, I think consoles are moving in that direction. But uh, the answer, I mean, the, it's because an iPhone comes out every year like clockwork. So eventually you just choose. Yeah. I, I have a conspiracy theory. About okay. Ooh, I love conspiracy Okay, here's the conspiracy theories. theory that I don't actually believe. Uh, the conspiracy theory is Red Ring was just to get us used to buying a new Xbox. It's a long con. All the red rings, we just buy a new Xbox every year because it breaks every year. It's an awful theory. And no. then when they move on to the next generation, we're trained and now we're going to buy the new models. Yeah, it's an awful theory. theory. So that's the terrible conspiracy theory, which it's is not true. Pretty bad, that's like actually. Justin's theories. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is like Mothman. That's Mothman caliber. That is, yeah. that is Mothman. You <laughs> saw <laughs> the Mothman <laughs> in a hot tub once, right? I did, yeah. Well, the Mothman wasn't in the hot tub. <laughs> I like the idea that you get out of the hot tub there's a weird Mothman just chilling, a couple girls. His wings are all wet. Yeah, like, oh, it's gross. Yeah, we saw the Mothman. There may or may not have been. Anyway, uh, yeah, Jared, you just got an Android phone, right? Are I you, did. Are you just, sad you didn't wait for the Google Pixel phone? Not at all. I, actually, I, mean, I got a, I got a relatively low cost Moto G Plus, and I could not be happier. I it should is have done this impossible. Years. It would be possible that you could be any happier with this phone. Uh, that is hyperbole <laughs> on my part. It is, however, an excellent phone, and I okay. should have switched well, Android not, years this ago. This is not Android <laughs> scoop. Uh, okay. Tech fetish is back. The next. Yeah. Quote, I would like some help translating. It says, uh, Microsoft aims to offer the consumer a good price continuum so people wouldn't look at these two things as so disconnected because of the price delta. 
the yeah. price delta. Yeah. Price delta is a fancy uh-huh. way of saying price gap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So w- the Xbox One S is what three ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. So that, impl- mm-hmm. that implies that uh, the Scorpio will be three ninety nine. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it implies, and I think that's the so, that's yeah. the price they have to hit because uh, yeah. that's what Sony's hit all generation with. Mm-hmm. That's what the Pro is going to be when it comes out. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what the base level PSVR is, and I think that three ninety nine. Yeah. You're able to hop into that much easier psychologically than four ninety nine because then you tip into five hundred and you're like, okay, yeah. that's yeah. premium. So let's see, next fall will be the consoles will be three years old or four, four. years old. This four years old. Three so that's totally yeah. you know, if we get a new console every four years, it's not bad. Yeah. This isn't that. I think but two I mean, years I think two years after this thing we're gonna get a Xbox two and a PS five. I yeah, mean, I don't. I mean, that's I, still coming. I, I don't know. I, do. I, I think they totally want to move to a cycle where, uh, you know, The Witcher Four comes out, or you know, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven comes out, and it supports, you know, the last three Xboxes. You know, it supports the Xbox One, the Scorpio, and the brand new thing. Yeah. But then the next game, the last generation will fall off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we're there yet. And that is how that that is how things work on mobile. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the phones are significantly more powerful now, and certain really really high end mobile games. You know, it's like, look, anything older than a five S, this just won't run. Yeah. On it yet mm-hmm. and they've sort of found that comfort level where it sucks to have the device older like yeah. oh i only have a five now i can't play this thing but but there's also some understanding of like well yeah but your hardware's gotten kind of old the so. other part of this i haven't heard anybody talk about yet that i wonder about is you're not spending a hundred million dollars developing a mobile game uh and you are mm-hmm. uh when you're making a a, a triple a title if you're spending tens of millions of dollars on your product you want the lar- largest possible install base because you need to sell as many as you can mm-hmm. i'm still wondering how that's going to affect this iterative console cycle it does make me think that they're not going to be able to space them out annually i, th- I think well, what you, you said uh, well i mean that le- let's say i make a witcher game right do i want to build the game to take advantage of the latest and greatest technology in mm-hmm. every possible way or do i want to build it for the lowest common denominator well they're you, not mutually exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive, but where am I going to put my emphasis, and yeah. how is that going to affect the way that the hardware manufacturer is trying to sell? Yeah, their but I mean, hardware? let's not talk about like let's not talk about this like it's some crazy thing that doesn't exist. Like PC sliders, uh, that's already a thing. You can mm-hmm. already play you know games in much higher resolution on PC than you can on console. PC slider is my favorite band. Yeah, PC slider and, yeah. and uh, game developers you know already have to do that with ultra settings. On I PC. agree. With I think that. I, the reason I sort of disagree with you there is because. At, at, at what point, at what fall, does Activision say, all right, it is time that Call of Duty no longer supports the, well, at this time, 40 right. million PS4s, but at that point, maybe 100 million PS4s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what if that fall, EA's like, well, Battlefield still does, so all of you that still have that old console, you can play the new Battlefield. Like, that's one of those, there's yeah. like a, there's sort of a, a gentleman's agreement when a yeah. new console launches that's like, all right, everyone's getting ready to shift onto the new thing. Yeah. yeah. And like this year, well, you know, Destiny's a good example where it finally cut off support yeah. for PS3 yeah. and Xbox 360. Although that's a little bit of a weird case because that was also holding back, you know, they sure. couldn't do things with the size of the world and things like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, it still feels like it'd be possible for other games that aren't as interconnected to do just a separate skew. You know, like mm-hmm. Madden still came out on the PS3 sure. for Yeah, I semi-agree with you, Justin. Years. There's obviously no technical hurdle to, to keep them from doing that. Mm-hmm. What I'm worried about is an ecosystem hurdle, how this works in a established marketplace because there's more that goes into console development than just the technology. Yeah, I mean, I think the the gross oversimplification of it would be, uh, you know, when the Xbox, whatever the thing after Scorpio will be called, their naming system is completely whack at this point. But, uh, you know, hey, this game runs at 4K. You know, on the Scorpio, it runs at 1080p and on the original Xbox, it runs at 900p. And that's it. You know, the frame rate's the same across all. You don't have any sort of uh, gameplay benefits, a higher, you know... Uh, there's not more levels or anything. Yeah. Or, you know, particle effects are turned on. Even something like draw distance is a little dicey because that could conceivably give you an advantage in, mm-hmm. a, you know, in, yep. in a certain context. Yeah. All right, the next quote I need some help with is, uh, let's see. Uh, Phil Spencer thinks Xbox Scorpio will feel like it's a premium product, a premium console, and not something anything more than that. I think that is that is <laughs> them that is code for we are still developing the successor to the Xbox One, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that it's not this. Yeah, it's uh, not a, it's not a okay. whole new console. Interesting yeah. generation. Okay. Yeah, right. and that's what Sony said too. With uh, Mark Cerny clarified that with the PS Pro that this is not yeah. the start of a new console generation. This is the elite controller of consoles. I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> both console companies want to move away from. You know, I think. I think Microsoft just wants to release an Xbox every two years, just like uh, Apple releases an iPhone every year. And I think they just want to call it the Xbox. Here's our new Xbox. It replaces the old sure. Xbox. And 
And yeah, sort of like how the sl- uh, PS4 Slim is just called the PS4, and it's just mm-hmm. phasing out yeah. the original PS4. Exactly. Or uh, maybe iPhone's a little bit of a weird example, because they do still call it you know, iPhone 7, yeah. iPhone 6 Plus. But a better example might be like MacBook Pros. It's just, it's always the MacBook Pro. Yeah. It's always the MacBook. Sure. And mm-hmm. then whichever one you, you know, if you buy one this year, it's more powerful than or the one you got last year. Condoms are more powerful every year yep. compared to last year's condoms. Consoles are becoming more and more PC-like. More and more condom-like. Yeah. Yep. Condom war. <laughs> Uh, the Xbox boss said people shouldn't be worried that this thing is going to be unlike any console price you've ever seen, as they didn't design it that way. So it's not going to be a $1,000 console. It'll yeah, be yeah. like what we're used to spending yeah. on a console. I think that was when you said 3DO. I think that, that hit the nail on the head. And we also, Jonathan <laughs> Dordbush put up a feature sort of uh, after this news broke where he tallied uh, all the consoles from the Odyssey yeah. mm-hmm. on what their, uh, when they were released, their original price, and what it was for inflation. The 3DO is something like $1,200 now, yeah. which is... Yeah, the 3DO and the Neo insane. Geo were the most expensive consoles yeah. of all time. Yeah, the, the GameCube was a heck of a uh, steal for two years. Yeah. Yeah. And yet they still managed to make money on practically every one they sold by most of Because they had a handle. Why do you say practically every one? Like which ones didn't they make money on? Well, Orange we don't know ones. for the sure one because Orange those, were, did they make those money were all, <laughs> those reports were from people who took them apart and figured out what parts went into them, figured out about how much they spent building them. But it's possible that early in the cycle they might have sold them at a loss. Okay. All right. What? He also highlighted the different hard drive size options currently available for the Xbox mm-hmm. One S and how that product line is a good indication of what can be expected from the company going forward. So mm-hmm. same same hard hard drive size? Both my PS4 and Xbox One hard drives are completely and utterly full. <laughs> and they don't <laughs> even PS4 have especially. like the yeah. games are so big now that like they, yeah, it's not see, like it's not like I have dozens of games on them. Did you yeah. see how much the uh, uh, Call of Duty Infinite War Isn't it like 130 gigabytes or something? Yeah, 130 gigabytes. Think that, for yeah, the that, legacy Yeah, edition. that combined with uh, Modern Warfare with the which remaster, is yeah. Insane, which is like, like yeah. if you have a you know 500 gig yeah. PS4, that's literally like, taking up more than a third. I'd have I to mean, delete like three yeah. full, full AAA games. games. Yeah. If you have if you have, I mean, this is what happened to me. I had like Metal Gear, Witcher, Batman Arkham, and like Destiny on one Xbox, and like it's full. Yeah. Textures designed for 4K games. I mean, this is so much yeah. space. I'm mean, not feeling this All will be. Uh, I think it'll be a one terabyte. Uh, Four hundred dollar one, and then a two terabyte, five hundred dollar one. And that, that, that that's a little bit of a that kind of sucks because like one terabyte is really not enough anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's I'm, like, oh, you can get the Scorpio for four hundred dollars. What a good deal! But like, you can't really like that. Uh, that option is is it's not very future proof. I know. I think I'm one of the few people. I don't mind just deleting game. Like I I pretty much I play one single player game at a time. Yeah. And if I am playing a couple games, a lot of times they're smaller. But games. it's like it's yeah. just for me deleting a game is signaling defeat. Like I did. I had to delete, <laughs> to make room for Forza Horizon Three. I had to delete Metal Gear. And then that removed any shred of like, I'm going to go back to that sure, game someday. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> it's just gone forever. It's over. Yeah. It's banished from the Justin Spear. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, speaking of 4K, game's we've been, overrated anyway. Uh, what, Metal Gear? Yeah. Shut up. The game is awesome. Yeah, the game's awesome. That's a real fun game. Uh, we have an email from Cat Jeremy. Cat who's, Jeremy. Uh, who's, the, uh, who's the, the famous uh, porn star, Jeremy? What? Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Jeremy. Sorry, not Jeremy's last name. Damon, pretending he looks like, like he Super doesn't know. Mario. I said remember. Uh, but this is probably from that Jeremy. From Ron Jeremy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Big hog. Uh, he emailed us at the game at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like you, Cam. What's up, And Ron? he asks, is 4K just a fad like 3D was? Ooh. Should Sony and Microsoft just stick to 1080p and get that working first? Most people don't even have a 4K television. Yeah. Well, those are two separate questions, Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, 4K is not a fad. But yes, game developers probably don't need to be in a massive rush mm-hmm. to, uh, to get there. Yeah. yeah. Remember when 3D gaming was a push? I yeah. Was, God, that was terrible. Stop trying to make 3D yeah. a thing. But I looked, I looked up, actually, uh, there's a huge amount of games from last gen that support stereoscopic yep. 3D. Yeah. Yep. That I, just, games. I didn't yeah. even know. Like, all these games I played actually support 3D. I just yep. never took advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. It didn't work that great. And movies, I, I, I blame Avatar for everything. Yeah. yeah. 4K yeah. is, I think 4K is probably coming and will be coming still for a couple of years. Yeah. But I, I couldn't care less, but well, I feel like it's just sort of this tide of lethargic inevitability. Like, this is just going to keep showing up it's, it's in, different. in televisions until I buy one. It's different from yeah. uh, 3D because you don't need any special, like, headset, yeah. head, yep. eye gear. It just, like, looks better. Yeah. And people understand that. It's like, yeah. it's going to make everything look if better. 3D is like such, it. like, active participation in terms yeah. of you have X amount of glasses and what if you have a bunch of people over and, and everyone that kind of thing. Kind of goofy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whereas with this, it's like, well, we're going to get a point just where 4K TVs are just TVs. the standard. You can yeah. get right. one for 500 bucks. I mean, it's yeah. the same yeah. as HDTV yeah. where, like, uh, you know, everyone's parents 
parents, maybe not everybody, my parents are like, I don't care about an HD yeah. TV. I don't, yeah. You know, it's not important to me, but at some point their TV broke and they needed a new TV. That was just and, the TVs. They were everywhere. And Walmart, HD Best TVs Buy. were just TV. And yeah. that's how it's, I think that's how it's, how it's going to happen here. Yeah. Exactly yeah. the same way. You, you think back to 2006, you know, there was a period of time when HD consoles were available, but that wasn't as important as it was just two years later. Yeah. Uh, well, and also, I jumped to an HD TV because we hit a point where, uh, like, Games like Dead Rising, I remember specifically, the text yeah. was so small on, a, yeah. on my old TV. I was like, I literally don't know what's going on right now. Whereas mm-hmm. yeah. I don't think we're ever going to hit a point where a, a, you're suffering performance because no. you're not in 4K. That, uh, <laughs> that Xbox 360 generation was like so revelatory for a lot yeah. of us. Because I played, like, I played uh, Oblivion on my old SD television. Oh, yeah. And then I played Gears of War on my HD television. And you're just like, what? Like, yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Um, there's a few special considerations with 4K that are different than the jump from SD to HD, for example, uh, and that's really just content. Uh, there's very, very little 4K content out there. Um, Blu-rays that you have in your house now are not 4K. Uh, you yeah. need to have special 4K Blu-rays to display yeah. in that resolution. There is almost no content streaming at, at true 4K on the internet. And even if there is, uh, there aren't a lot of internet connections that can handle sure. that. Sure, yeah. Uh, you know, and in video games, to do true 4K, native 4K, requires such a ridiculous degree of horsepower that you're trading off, yeah. you know, uh, other, other you know, details in, in your graphics just to get, you know, just to cram those additional yeah. pixels, no, no pixels on screen. No enemies. No enemies. No enemies. Yeah, they no all become walking enemies. simulators. Think so about how hard it is simulators. to get a 60 FPS frame rate yeah. uh, now on a, on a 1080 display and then think right. about quadrupling the requirement. Yeah. That being said, uh, on a on a trip a couple months ago, uh, I don't think we could say what the game was. I saw a game that's coming out soon. Half Life Three. Run, it was Half Life Three. Yeah. Uh, running. They they showed it on PC and they're like, all right, we're gonna show you what it looks like in 4K. Granted, every it's gonna run so jankily, but this yeah. is what it looks like in 4K. And it was like, yeah. W- w- it, from still shots, it was probably the nicest looking game I've ever seen in my yeah. life. And then when you start moving, you're like, oh, no, everything's broke. Like, <laughs> uh, just like looking at a single screen, you're like, this is yeah. probably the I nicest think, looking yeah. thing ever. I think we're several years away from the horsepower being able to, it makes a lot more sense to cram a tremendous amount of you know, artistic detail you know, and technical detail <laughs> yeah. into a 1080p uh, image than it is to, than to try to get 4K working. I think you There's, touched it's, on... It's not compromise free. And mm-hmm. you touched on something so important earlier, Justin, when you talked about the bandwidth just to get it in your home. That's mm-hmm. the other end. Until the infrastructure can handle it, I think we're, this is going to yeah. remain My internet sucks. It took, it took me so long to download Gears of War. Yeah. The sheer <laughs> data that's on screen during yeah. every frame is, I mean, it's it's boggling. Um, it's it's interesting. I think it's the first time that really displays have leapt ahead of, you know, our, our bandwidth. Reach throughput. exceeding your grasp. Yeah. yeah. A uh, report on Business Insider predicts that 4K TVs will be in more than half of American households by 2025. Yeah. Okay. So we're still yeah. like 10 years out. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. And that's if fair. that sounds like a, a long time, that's apparently a much faster adoption rate than HD TVs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's what about HGTV? Uh, I, I, Is that the Home and Garden television? Yeah. Yeah. I used to watch uh, the Trading Spaces on there. Yeah. Uh, that, I like Property what, Brothers. Stop that. it. Also, apparently, uh, prices of 4K TVs have fallen 85% in the last two years. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're yeah. already they're already probably sub 1,000 bucks for, I don't know yeah. how. like Sub 1,000 bucks? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I think you can find deals. Yeah. Yeah, like I, well, I've gotten yelled like, at by being like, oh, they're too expensive. And people are like, no, I bought mine for like 800 bucks. Yeah. Wow. You That's probably do still have too to, much for a television. You have to make sure that they're not crappy. $800 is too much for television? Absolutely. How often do you use your television? Yeah, what, uh, like twice a year. Yeah, apparently. Well, <laughs> how do you do your job? I don't. Oh. oh. So you go for the Marty school. <laughs> All right, next email comes from Stephen Daniels. Hey, Stephen he says, Daniels. hi, Damon and friends. Aww. Long time listener, first time emailer. Aww. I live near DC and have an hour commute to and from work each day. Ah. So I look forward to downloading your latest podcast each week as they help me keep me sane while everyone else around me on the road is practicing to be a character in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> when I don't have a new episode of GameScoop, I go back to episodes from the past and reminisce about whatever was happening in the industry at that time. One consistent theme through the years has been discussion about rumors surrounding upcoming games and hardware. As the console generations advance, your crew often talks about impressive new hardware specs and innovative gameplay mechanics. Sure. If the Games Group crew was given an unlimited budget and could pick any industry celebrity, living or dead, such as Hideo Kojima, to run a studio, what dream game would you create? Oh, that's So a, pick that's a person, a and what game would they make? Wow, the first half of that no question budget. was very yeah. unrelated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> a <laughs> So anybody to make anything? He says, I'd personally create a sci-fi MMO set in VR that Ooh. had a universe where you could travel from space stations to planets seamlessly without any loading screens. Gameplay would include space combat like Star <coughs> Citizen and Elite Dangerous and FPS mechanics with the level of polish like Halo. My studio would, would be run by the Hauser Brothers as I think they are the best at creating 
living, breathing worlds. Wow. That's a really good answer to that question. Uh, Daniel James? What was his name? James Daniels. James Daniels? Uh, no. James Joyce? No. Stephen Daniels. Okay. James Joyce. I've said before, and I think Dear Petty would, would play my game. Yeah. Uh, I want to take the Fallout formula and uh, set it in uh, feudal Japan, where I'm a wandering ronin. And the game's entirely in Japanese. And I'll, I'll, I'll head up the studio. I've got an unlimited budget. <laughs> an unlimited budget. I think I can oversee things and make that game. All right, that, that sounds spectacular. I, 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 <coughs> I would play that game in a heartbeat. Yeah. Okay, so I know the game. I sold one copy. You guys, just, somebody jump in here. I know the game, but I'm working on the developer. I, I know what the game okay. I want to make, but I don't know who. Yeah, to I don't know what that. developer. Like, okay, yeah, it here for it's kind of tough for me. Like, I, I my I mean, mind immediately. Ju- what? Like, everyone would probably want Miyamoto, right? Like, I mean, uh, yeah, but like, can I pluck him out of a certain time? Yeah, he said <laughs> living or dead, so maybe like yeah, 1990. Miyamoto I was about to say 90, like, like at yeah. SNES era Miyamoto, yeah. or like right when you're tipping on to yeah. the N64 Miyamoto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Miyamoto. Miyamoto's career arc follows Wu Tang. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, what was your what was your game? Okay, Jared. so I want I want to make a Toontown open world game uh, set in oh, Roger, yeah, you mentioned in Roger yeah. Rabbit Roger Toontown, Rabbit. and it's got all the licensed characters from Disney, from Warner Brothers, all the characters that inhabited that universe, every cartoon you can imagine, and a huge, wonderful open world. And I think I want Jordan Mechner to make it. Mm. And, uh, rem- and is that's a uh, llama stuff guy? Uh, no. no, no, that's no. Uh, that that that's close. Uh, uh, th- very close, but no. Jordan Mechner is Prince, Prince of Persia. Persia. Prince of Persia. Karatika, right. What's um, the name of the llama stuff guy? Uh, the llama stuff guy Lama Soft? is no, uh, no. Lama Soft. Made Tempest. Oh, right. oh yeah. Oh, what it's is his just... name? Hold on. Oh, this is hurting my head. I know All this. Right, we've... Horatio yeah. Llama Soft. Horatio. Yeah. Llama Attack of the Killer Llamas. Yeah. Or Attack of the Mutant Camel. Yeah. But anyway, this guy's great. He really has a thing for llamas and camels. Same. Apparently. Why can't I remember his name? Dead Space Invaders Extremes background. The goat up. Yeah, so I'll think about that while somebody else answers. Anyway, but yeah, Jordan I think Jordan Mechner would be interesting because I, I read his um, – he kept a diary when he wrote Prince of Persia and Karatika, and seeing the, the, the way he engaged games and thought about trying new things, a, very experimental, very – I think he had a great idea for how to do games cinematically, and I'd like to see him challenged to, to create something with just unlimited resources. What was today. the last game he worked on? I was the, just going to oh, say, geez, I was I just know. wondering what Mechner's up, up to now. Uh, I he do was doing, not know what the last game Mechner They did uh, iOS ports of stuff like, uh, what's the, the train Last game? Express? Yeah, the Last that? Express and some yeah. of that stuff. Mm-hmm. He got some of the rights to his stuff back. Yeah, maybe he yeah. always had the rights. And he was, yeah, he was doing interviews for it, so he had something to do with it. Yeah. 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 I don't. I, it's kind of strange, but I don't have a great answer to this question for a couple of reasons. One, I kind of don't know what I want until a developer you know, gives it to me. Like I wouldn't have necessarily said I wanted or needed something like The Witcher 3 in my life. I'm like, oh, it's already you know, great open world fantasy RPG. But then it comes out, and I said, "Oh no, this is totally giving me something that I didn't know that I, you know, was filling, was scratching an itch I didn't yeah. know I had." And a lot of the stuff that I want, um, you know, my dream games would be a little bit smaller stuff. Like I, I <laughs> Boom Blocks has been on my mind a lot lately. <laughs> really? yeah. Want more Boom Blocks? You know, I want another 2D Mario. That's uh, Mario Maker was surely we should we can bring back Boom Blocks now that VR is a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Right? That, that maybe totally that's why well. it's on yeah. my mind. Uh, like I want a sequel to Super Mario World. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Mario Maker is dope as hell, and I'm glad that it exists. But you know, I would like the talents of Nintendo going back to making another you know secret filled yeah. uh, mm. 2D platformer that's not New Super Mario Bros. And that's so, not Yoshi's Island. Obviously. What, you know, I'd like Ron Gilbert making Monkey Island what about Ron 3. Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah. Ron Jeremy. Making Milky Island. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that that I'd be really, really into. Uh, the game I've always wanted to make was, I guess I can't say always because I want to make this for like four years because if I wanted to make this when I was a kid, I'd be a child alcoholic. Uh, it's called Last Call. And so it's, you're, you start and you're in a bar and the guy calls Last Call and every play session lasts 15 minutes. And it's from 145 to 2. And you sort of have this very small but very dense laid out world. And for that 15 minutes, you could do whatever you want. You can... There's a couple of people still in the bar. You can listen to their conversations. You can talk with them. You can talk to the bartender. You can get in a fight. You can play pool. You can look at your phone. And so there's just – it is a small space that has uh, thousands of variables yeah. in it. You and can relive the same yeah. 15 minutes a thousand ways. Burn the bar down. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. And it can go – like it can get crazy. It can get insane. Yeah. Or you can fall in love. Or it could just be a very – you could totally waste your time. Or you who's, can try to get – Who's your designer on this? That's what I don't know – like – like, well, you know, I'm, I'm curious, like, what is the, is there an overall objective? Is there a way to win the game? I don't think so. I think it is more of you keep sitting down and just trying to see what kind of a different ending you can get every time. I wouldn't say there's go up to the roof a the best ending. There. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's a best ending. Like, sort of like, uh, serious dog wanders in. Yeah. yeah. Follow him That'd home. be great. Follow the dog. Um, I don't know, like Tim Schafer. Oh, Tim Schafer. Uh, it's like, I, I almost great. think maybe, adventure maybe, games maybe, because of maybe. a lot of like, maybe you could have different threads done by different, like, here are the mm. five. 
Schaefer threads. And there's yeah. almost like a horror thread. And yeah. Oh, that's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Like a four rooms, but with... with yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're... Okay, so two things. First, Jeff Minter finally remembered. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, second, uh, have you played Callahan's Cross Time Saloon? Well, I didn't... No, we, we talked about I that. didn't even understand what you just said. <laughs> uh, oh, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon? <laughs> It's Callahan's Can- Cross Time Salute. Yeah, okay. it's a it's a it's a video game set in a bar, and I think Marty really likes it. It's also that's a little bit like Stanley Parable. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's another video game set in a bar. It's called Tapper. Yes. Yeah, that's set in a bar. And there's a whole bunch of different endings in that game. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you get root beer. Really. Yeah. Callahan's Cross Time Saloon featuring music uh, written and performed by Spider Robinson, famous sci-fi writer. Spider Best bar Robinson. scenes in games. Ooh, this is the opening wow. of Prey. Yeah, Catherine. Mm. Yeah, a lot of stuff in Catherine's good. Yeah. Or the, wow. the bar in Moonside and Earthbound. That time in Red Dead, I killed all those people. Oh, don't do that. What about when you can drink milk in Zelda? Is that yeah, that's Wan Wan <laughs> yeah. Wan Wan Bar. Yeah, the in Majora's Mask. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Good, good times in bars. I have one, I've, I've, because we're on the subject, I have one more idea for a game that I like, and I've, I've probably said this on the show before, but uh, in this game. Uh, there's a, a, a moderate-sized city like San Francisco, and the city is represented very realistically, very accurately. And your goal is to level the entire city in any way you can. Like Blast Corps, but next gen. Yeah, but you're just like a person. Oh, and like okay. you have to like figure it out. Like Find explosives, find guns, use uh, semi-trucks to run into buildings or whatever. And then you, the only goal of the game is to level the entire city, and then when everyone starts playing, it's kind of a, like a race to see like who can level the city. I got like, yes. ooh. I also feel like any, any re- realistic means. Oh, okay, realistic. It can't be like, oh, you found the secret base and you unleashed like a kaiju that's going to destroy. Yeah. Half no, the city it's more like find a rocket launcher. Hideo okay. Kojima's level. Of Figure change. out how to topple a building so it falls Dude, over another building. Crackdown Three yeah. was just that. I'd, yeah. I'd be yeah. super happy. It sounds yeah. like Red Faction uh, Guerrilla. If Crackdown Three so, existed. I'd be super happy. It absolutely <laughs> probably doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, that game has definitely gone dark. All right, this email's from Gustavo. Mm. What's up, Gustavo? It says, hello, guys. Love your show, and I would like to hear your opinions on a current American video game industry issue. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bum, bum, bum. After seeing how much censorship we have in the West, I wonder if we'll ever have full adult video games on systems like the PS4. In Japan, they have apps like DMM.R18. I haven't even I haven't heard oh, of this. Oh, Dermrat. Right. Where you can watch your purchase adult movies on your console. Mm-hmm. We would never dream of an app like that in the West. Well, you can dream. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, we've been getting a few games with relatively mature content, like Senran Kagura, Gal Gun, Caladrius Blaze, etc. Mm-hmm. But even games like Dead or Alive Extreme 3 are still getting banned, as silly as those games are. We'll, we'll get to this in a sec. Not banned. Yeah. Now that we have VR coming our way, I imagine more immersive titles will become available. I wonder if we'll ever be mature enough to accept those titles in our market. I feel as adults, we should have the freedom to experience these games if we choose to do so. Most of them are pure comedy. It is embarrassing that we are getting treated as little kids when it comes to these kinds of games. The excuse that there is not a market for hentai games and the like in the West is absolute nonsense. We all know that. And the fact that Eastern companies retract themselves from releasing those games over here because they are afraid of negative feedback makes me feel that in the West we are still decades behind when it comes to cultural advancement and just maybe we are not fully part of the free world. (laughs) All right, so (laughs) So let's go. I've got a little bit to say about this. Let's go. But I want to go through it. Comment by comment. All right. Uh, and remember, Gustavo is a fan of ours. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, Gustavo no, says, will, he, will we ever have full adult video games on systems like the PS4? No. 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 I yes. mean, for a full adult as in, like, AO? Is that like, like yeah. yeah. Or, like, hardcore hentai games on a closed ecosystem like no. the PlayStation yeah. I mean, 4. I don't no. think so. Yes, by the time I die. You think well, so? Yep. I, I mean, it's interesting that we do have, you know, you said AO, we do have the adults only ESRB rating. You know, it's it's sort of it's a harder used, rating than yeah. M, but it's not, it's a death sentence in no. the same way that uh, NC17. Because no retailer will sell it. However, mm-hmm. there's so much digital distribution yeah. now. You would think that yeah. would cut something I mean, out. So those that's, games exist, that's, do those games exist on Steam? Does Steam sell I think you? Steam is a lot more uh, lenient. Lenient for that. Yeah. Sort of you can get Valve them on- doesn't really see that Steam is like our console and like yeah. something they, they, yeah, yeah. they're presenting. You can purchase games with with uh, nudity and sexual content on PCs in certain ways. I do think that the fact that stores are going to be less and less important to how you acquire yeah. software, even on closed platforms as time passes, mm-hmm. makes this probably an inevitability. Also, attitudes for sexuality in America continue to shift and change, and I think those two things will combine. It's a long way off, but I do think it'll happen. I mean, there's definitely, Steam is already full of puzzle games where, you know, you beat the puzzle and then the girl takes her clothes off. Oh, dang, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, nice. those exist. Yeah, but they're, they, they, I don't know about AO. I don't know if Steam has. Well, yeah, like hardcore, like full on. Wait, like Peggle? Peggle. I'm not. I'm playing like I'm playing puzzle games where after end the Peggle, like the unicorn just is all stoked. There is. instead (laughs) Instead of a rainbow, it's just boobies. 
Yeah, that sounds exists. Yeah. Sounds wonderful. All right, what's the second point? Uh, he says even games like uh, DOA Extreme 3 are still getting banned. Like we said, that game is not banned. I mean, the, they just didn't release it here. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. not, that's not the same thing as being yeah, banned. I, I don't want people to have the wrong idea. This is, this is why I was kind of making them mm, face. I don't want people the wrong idea about Japan. It's not like Japan doesn't censor things that go into consoles as well. I mean, the threshold is different. But console games in Japan are still treated very differently than than PC games. Uh, their yeah. <coughs> their threshold for nudity in some cases can be higher. Certain kinds of touching content or something, for example. But you're not going to find, by and large, full blown hardcore pornographic games on closed console hardware over there either. Uh, and that's yeah. something that I think yeah. is a misconception here that I want to make sure people understand. The threshold is different, but it's not anything goes uh, and I yeah. don't want that to be misrepresented Sony doesn't want to be known as the company that has a console with like pornographic content on it yeah. mm-hmm. so that's why that sort of stuff isn't going to be on the PlayStation 4 console you do run into an interesting situation historically sometimes consoles that aren't winning the, the war for that generation loosen up on that, Saturn was a big example of that. You had a lot more etchy type content on Saturn than you mm-hmm. did on PlayStation in Japan because they're like, well, we're great at 2D and we need people to play. And so come on over, naked people. Yeah, the Wii U and, did the same thing. Uh, Just open the porn floodgates. It was great. But, there's, there's, uh, but again, there was there was an upper <clears throat> threshold on that. Sorry, Justin. Yeah. There's not a lot of upside is the thing. So for Sony or someone to allow you know a lot more adult content opens the door to you know so much potential backlash or bad press and kind of for what? Like they'd make some money but not enough, yeah. you know. Like it's not it's not from their perspective it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, he said that there was a huge market for in the US and I don't think there is a huge I think it's market. very niche. I think it's a very niche. Market. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he mentioned Sinran Kagura actually looked up uh, they announced last year that series has sold a million copies worldwide. Mm-hmm. The series has been running for five years now. There's been like six or seven games. So yeah. over five years, six or seven games in the series have only sold one million copies worldwide. Yeah. That tells me these games sell in the tens of thousands mm-hmm. probably in the U.S. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. not, a, it's not, you know, Call of Duty's going to sell 10 million copies mm-hmm. in 24 hours. Now yeah. there is an argument to be made that if they were available for discrete download at home without anybody ever knowing, sure. uh, that they might sell... Sure. 50 to 100 times that. Yeah. Uh, but we That's don't know. That's true. Yeah. And I, 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 you know, I, I'm of the belief that adults should be able to do whatever they want, as long mm-hmm. as they're not hurting anyone. So, uh, But also, like, uh, it's totally up to a company whether or not they want to release this sort of game over here or not, right? Yeah. Like, they, you can't, like, demand or force any company to release that stuff. And I also feel like there will be more... Uh, he mentioned the word mature a lot, and I think games are maturing and maturing slowly in the way that they portray relationships and sexuality and, and yeah. the body. And I think as we go on, there are going to be actual mature representations of sex in games yeah. that it's are like, pushing yeah. boundaries further without being sort of uh, directly drawn from Japan anime-inspired yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, you have, you have some... a different word because, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Dead or Alive Extreme Three, I wouldn't say is a mature. mature. Yeah. Exactly. Like we need it's to very, we need divorce yeah. or yeah. remove. There's you know, mature the rating the maturation and then mature and then, like yeah. Yeah. mature yes. art. Silent yeah. Hill Two is incredible because it makes me sexually uncomfortable. Uh, Catherine is mm-hmm. tremendous because it deals with sexuality in genuinely mature ways. Mm-hmm. And there are other things you could do with that. And then you have weird stuff on PC out there that you're like. You know, I, I don't know if this is mature or not, but it's hilarious. You think about a game like Sperm Rider, which is just never heard of that. A, gi- a cowboy riding Rider, a giant Rider. sperm over a city. Like from what year is this? Uh, this was probably six or seven years ago. Um, the good old days. You know, and and you have these weird kind of ex- yeah. We're going to see more of it because I think in the United States, while we certainly have uh, ultimately, it's not about morality for. A lot of people, as much as it's about money, and when the perception changes that there's money to be made and people aren't going to care, then yeah, it, that that will shift things because we are a very pragmatic and greedy group of people. What's the, what's the game? You take a shower, you dead. What's I'm that? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, shower yeah, with yeah your that's dad actually simulator. the name of that game. I think. Yeah, yeah. Which one? Shower with your dad simulator. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. No, I'm that's not. That's a game. We're not kidding. On, that's, that's a real game. I'm pretty sure that I is on you were Steam. Kidding. Nope. No, it's called, I think that's it's called Shower with your dad simulator. Yeah. Really. yeah, I think uh, it's on Steam. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's played for laughs. It's yeah. not gross or anything. Sure. <laughs> it's maybe a little gross. <laughs> 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 All right, now's the time on Game Soup when we play video game twenty questions. Ooh, Everyone knows yay. how this works. You uh, suggest a game, and then my panel here has twenty yes or no questions to guess it. 
This week's suggestion comes from Denzel. Washington? Yep. Oh, dude, I loved you in Man on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, you're like, ah, Denzel movie, that doesn't I think, suck. I think <laughs> that's really good. That's really glory. Glory? Glory. Oh, good. Glory's very good. Training day. Yeah. Training day was cool. So. Actually, a lot of a lot of good things. I, I kind of liked Fallen. I have a soft spot in my heart for Fallen. I haven't seen Fallen. Yeah, I feel like those yeah. Denzel movies come in a couple different flavors. Well, but I got drunk and my plane went upside down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sully? <laughs> well, that's, wait, that's the other one. No, that's Sully's where he... <laughs> I, I may have been drunk, but my plane didn't go upside down. Yeah. Right. All right, question number one. Who wants to start us? Well, I mean, I, I think traditionally that mantle falls on Justin. Yeah, the patriarch. After, after last week's Carmen San Diego debacle, I'm still trying to recover. So. Ooh, yeah. last week was where the, the Carmen they San Diego debacle. Yeah, they, did, they didn't guess it, though. They yes. didn't get it. Yeah. Can you, in this game, can you see your hands? Yes. All right, there we go. You can see your hands. Jesus. What Trespasser. happened to this game? Trespasser. <laughs> Uh, did, it, did it come out uh, after? Did it originally come out after uh, January first, two thousand? No. Okay. Did it come out after January first, nineteen ninety? Yes. All right. We, we got, got a nineties game with uh, hands. You play this game. Is this game three uh, D? Yes. Ooh, a three D hand simulator. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, was this game uh, featured on a, a Nintendo console? No. Was this game critically well received? Yes. Uh, is, this, is this played from the first person perspective? No. You can't see your hands. You can right. in a lot Some of games. Oh, yeah, experience. any game with a gun, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Trespasser. Yeah. Stop right. talking about Trespasser. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, now we know it's Wait, wait, it is uh, not first person. Right. It's it not 3D. on a Nintendo console, but yeah. it is 3D it's a 90s in the 90s. Uh, 90s. Only 90s kids. Is this uh, featured prominently on a uh, PlayStation console? What do you mean by uh, I guess, is this game, did, this, did this game appear on a PlayStation console? Yes. Okay. Uh, is this a licensed game? Um, no. So it's a PS1 game. Ape Escape. It's not my actual guess. Yeah. Could be, though. You do see hands in that game. Remember, you do lose if you guess wrong. I know. That's why I said it's not my actual guess. Uh, <laughs> do you play as a human? No. Not Ape a human. Escape. You yeah, play as a human in Ape Escape. That's 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I don't know what Ape Escape is. <laughs> uh, PlayStation game. Probably appearing on other stuff the way Damon phrased that question. Um, uh, in this game, do you, do you fire guns? No. Uh, does this game have sequels? Yes, I I think so. Yes, was, yes, 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 yes. It was well received. That was yes, yeah. was yes. So it's right. PS One game well received. Well received. Does third have person sorted. game, without, but also appeared on other things. Well, other yeah, without shooty third person game without shooty shooty three D. Yeah. Two lockdown genre. Don't like play the We don't know. It could have appeared on PS Two. I'm picturing PS One no, no, no. games. Uh, before two thousand, you don't shoot a gun. Before two thousand. Yeah. When did the PS One PS Two come out? Two thousand one. Oh, no, two thousand. Okay. Metal Gear is 2001. Right on the edge there. All right. Uh, is there a hand-to-hand melee combat in this game? Yes. Did we ask if we play as a human? Yeah. I said no. Yeah. Oh, we do not play as a human. Mm-hmm. Oh, I completely missed that. Wait, I thought you said yes, you do. And then no, you, you, do, not, you do not play as a do human. Do not play as a human, know. but there is hand-to-hand combat, you said? Yes. yes. Okay. Hand-to-hand combat, but you don't play as a human. Okay, so you're not a human, and it's hand-to-hand. Okay, so it could be a mascot platformer. It could be, yeah. I mean, you could be like... Uh, Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. Well, could, except for not. Like Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, you could be Crash it's Bandicoot. Yeah, you could but be no, Sly no, Cooper. He said, you could be... I said PS1, and he was very like... It sounds like it's on PS1 as well as other things. Yeah. So okay. it, could be, it could be like... Sly he was also very... The question was, or, did it appear on a PlayStation console? And I said yes. Yeah. Well, but the, 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 the real clue here was that Damon had to think a long time about sequels. Mm-hmm. But oh, I came okay. down on yes. You came down on yes, but it's not like Crash. Obviously, yes, sequels. Yeah. So it could uh, be. Should we try to lock down genre? I was gonna say it could still be like a three D fighting game. Like it would be like could a Power be. Stone. Although that didn't appear on PS One. Yeah, I, I mean, a game like that. Do yeah, we, also, we don't know don't, would you play as people? And is this game a platformer? Uh, not really. Croc. I wouldn't. Spyro. You know, Those if you were, if you were like. Sorting games into genres, you wouldn't put this in a platform. So it wouldn't fall in like the mascot platformer sure. band. So that takes out Spyro and, and Croc. Yeah, Croc and Gex and crap like Three that. Three Brawler. Brawler could be Brawler Stealth. It could be medieval. Do medieval you play stuff? as an animal? Uh, and I'm not talking about an animal like all aliens are animals. I'm talking about do you play as a as a animal? An earth earth animal. Yeah, an earth animal. No. Okay. So that That's gets, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, I know. Whoa. We burned through real quick. We burned through wow. real quick. Yeah, we did. We, uh, we Are you left. sure? Yes. Yeah, I've been, I've been looking at his fingers. Wow. Man. Don't worry, I look at your fingers too. Okay, so you are neither human nor animal, which means you could be robot or alien or plant or skeleton or, skeleton. or it could be like uh, skeleton Thomas warriors. Was alone, you could be shape. 
<laughs> but it does appear on PlayStation. Was there a right sequel now? to Medieval? No. But there is. But they announced there was a rumor that there was going to be one. So I don't think it's. In Medieval, don't you play a human in Medieval? No, you, you play as a skeleton. skeleton. Oh, there you are, a skeleton. That's right. Jeez, what's wrong with me? The ruling, the well, judges. This is a good game. The judges would rule that skeletons are not a human. Wait, this is a good yeah, game. I think it's uh, Med- Medieval's a good game. It's said critically well received. So Medieval's a good Skeleton game. Warriors. It's totally a good game. Hand to hand combat. Hand to hand combat. So you are something with. Wow, okay, this is a lot of. Wait, what about bad guys? Last time, uh, we, if we'd have guessed Carmen, like if we'd have gone. Is this game a single player only game? Yes. Ooh, single player only game. You are not a human. You do not have guns. Ooh. Not playing as a human or an animal is like a pretty good. Like I'd like to. Like it could be something like. Uh, although you do shoot in that game, but it could have been something like the Mar- the alien game where you play as the Martian. Yeah. Uh, he would destroy all humans. Yeah. What about? Um, that's not old enough. But I mean, sure. like, so I, I symphony. I mean, you're a vampire. You're that's, not. A, it's a 3D game. Well, it's so a symphony, but I don't think that symphony of the night is not absolutely not a 3D game. Absolutely, it's got all the 3D, the 3D coffin no, effects. Don't do the that. Backgrounds don't all 3D. Do, it's, it's, it's just not. It doesn't count. Yeah, yeah you're never right. in a million years <laughs> would anybody. If David ever said that that was a 3D game, I'd quit. You're right. I G. I get it. Uh, I like I I. It's not a great line of questioning, but. Uh-oh. Knowing that you play not as a human or an animal is like, like what does that leave us with? Robots, Robot. aliens, plants. Yeah. Is there a game where you beat people up as a plant? I'm trying to think of one. I mean, okay. Do you play... Oh, there's robots. What's robots? I, I, what I, is hand robots? Hand I'm trying to figure out a best way to slice it. Like, without burning a question on do you play as a skeleton yeah, yeah. or something like 3D that. 3D hand or, like, to hand with... Or, like, stubs the zombie. 3D hand-to-hand with robots and aliens. I mean, there's I a lot of could be like, do you bleed? Be... Would your character bleed if they get hurt? Would your character bleed if they get hurt? <laughs> That's a great question. I like that one. Robots don't bleed. Mm. Aliens do. Neither do skeletons. Probably. Skeletons <laughs> say shapes don't bleed. Wow. This That's a really, it's a really tough one. <laughs> I'm going to say... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Say but yes. This character would bleed. But that might come back to... Uh-oh. Back to haunt. Well, don't Uh-oh. worry. All of us are come back to haunt us because we are nowhere near. We are probably so <laughs> far off. You have three questions left. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're very close here at all. Hmm. He said haunt. Could it be a ghost? Ghost Who don't said haunt? He said haunt. Oh. But ghosts don't believe. Could, so. it, could it be an RPG? Could be. Could be a lot of things, but we've done a terrible job oh, of narrowing it down. Jesus. Look. Yeah, we didn't even come close <laughs> to narrowing down genre, did we? He no. said it's not primarily a platformer. He would yeah. Not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a mistake. It. We did it bad. Yeah. We did it bad. We did it real bad. We're, we're, we've worked ourselves into a terrible situation here. This yeah, but on the plus thing. side, you don't have. Guns. Is it based off a previous license? No, we already know. We that. already asked about license. We, we already know. Never asked license. that question. It's not a license. It's a dumb question. Someone on would the ask. plus side, none of this matters. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was this uh, 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 developed in uh, Japan? No. Oh yeah, we screwed up. Yeah, yeah we, we did, did real, real bad. bad. It's because you asked. Can you see your hands? 18. You well, can't that, see your hands. The first question is the time to throw out a silly question. Yeah, what about the 19th? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to have another question. Two right questions now. left. Okay, you might bleed, but he's going to say yes. You kind of bleed. Try and narrow it down, and then you can guess. Does, uh, maybe, so does it, uh, uh, that, to me, implies zombie mm-hmm. or vampire Yeah. or yeah. something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Agree with you there. V- Vampire the Masquerade. No, it's not going to be. Can't think of a. I mean, that's a based game. on a license. Yeah, it's based on a license. That one um, does have sequels, but it was kind of like, eh, is on PlayStation. Could be a PC game more. Legacy of Cain? Ooh. Yeah, that's... but that unequivocally got sequels. I don't know why they Yeah, so but, could, but there's stuff like Soul Reaver, and like it's sort of like Blood Omen. Did. Uh... Legacy of Kin, that's really good. <laughs> I'm trying to think about the smart way to narrow this down. Amy Hennig wrote those games. We could ask if this game Amy, was... Did Amy Hennig work on the series? That's the question you're asking? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so with your last question. Right. Yeah, is it Legacy of Kane? Wait, 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 wait. 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 There's I'm a bunch worried. of them. There's a bunch of them. Okay, well, I believe there's just Legacy of Kane. The two it could be is Legacy of Kane. Is Blood, o- Blood Omen Legacy of Kane? I think Blood Omen was a PS2 game. No, Blood Omen was the first one. Legacy. Wait, how does this? How does the series <laughs> order go? Legacy of Kane came after Blood Omen. Blood Omen, Legacy of Kane, and then Soul Reaver. No, I'm wrong. 
Soul Reaver came after. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so I feel you like I don't remember. I don't remember. Nope. I'm Soul, not helping at all. Soul Reaver Soul came Reaver. later. We need, two, we need two questions though. If Soul, only we hadn't asked about hands. <laughs> Soul Reaver came after because that was the that was the 3D. But that's the that's the one that's that's the 3D action adventure one. And then Blood Omen's the one that's more traditional RPG. I thought mm. that's fine. But it features hand to hand. But I don't I don't even consider that game 3D. I do. Blood Omen? I think it counts. Is it anything that we've asked? About. Is it Blood Omen Legacy? Of no, Pain? wait. We wait, still have a question. We still have a question. That is the question. Yeah, the final question. You're, you're on your final question. We're oh, is final the final question? I mean, it's a. Yeah. You have to. It has to be the guess. The question. If we had but one more question, game. we would be there. Okay. What do you got? I think it's Soldier. I'm not convinced that that game came out before 2000. It'd be great if it was none of these games. If not, Amy had worked on something else. Yeah, it's fine. No, let's go with Blood Omen. I trust you. No, I don't trust me. Okay, uh, Jared, Blood Omen or uh, Soul Reaver? We're not saying Legacy of Cain. We're not that going is there. Blo- that is Legacy of Cain. Is it? It's Blood Omen colon Legacy of Cain. I want to say Legacy of Cain. What if we just stay vague? Legacy yeah, of Cain. That's what I tried to do. I'm, I'm committing. Dude. Legacy of Cain. It's Soul Reaver. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it in the win column. <laughs> The full title is Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 1999. Ah, that PlayStation Dreamcast PC. Damon's figured out how to trip us up is to pick games right on <laughs> right that, on the right on that date line. Uh, the first game is Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. Yeah. Then there was Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver and what paused me about I think there was Soul Reaver 2. Yes. Legacy I think I believe that, so. but yeah. I don't think it had Legacy of Kane in the title Reaver anymore. Two. Yeah. There is th- that's a fr- confusing franchise. I think there's four of Soul them Reaver total. 2 was the third well, there's, game. Well there's Blood then Omen then like... 2 as well before Soul Reaver even. Is that I think true? no that might not be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't feel I'm I'm counting it as a win. It's not you a guys, win. I'm counting it as a win. <laughs> the official IGN wiki is not going to count we got, it as a win. We got to Legacy yeah. of Kane, and that's yeah, all but it's like it's like getting tackled in the one yard line. You don't get the yeah, points. Just, oh yeah, man, like if only we're for the hands. We're so close, and yet without the hands, we might never have gotten there. That game was fun. I played yeah. that game. It was great. I played that one in the first one, Blood it's Omen. But those are the only two I played. Definitely one of the top ten franchises that should return. Well, not on, not according to IGN. <laughs> well, and, what, uh, what do they know? <laughs> but it's like you're, they, you do a lot of jumping in that game, yes. but you don't call it a platformer. Yeah, I would probably. agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah and the blood fair. question, I also agree. Yeah, do, yeah, I guess he would bleed, yeah. and he has like yeah. weird. His hands are like three claws, basically. Yeah. Like this, yeah. Yeah. I think he bleeds. You had good answers. All, all all your answers were good. I'm not calling you out on any of them. Thank you for the suggestion, Denzel Washington. That was great. Yeah. Denzel Washington. Was I didn't know he was a fan of <laughs> Game Scoop or Legacy of Kane. <laughs> yeah, you know. We're hearing from all of the celebrities. Mm-hmm. You, him, Ron, Jeremy. Man, I made the wrong call. That's fine. Yeah. Have you not? Did you not play those games, Jared? I know I fooled with them, but I've never been as fooled with them. Yeah, fooled with them. Like it has been a long time since I played a king game. Yeah, yeah that's, it's been a long time. Well, it's been a long time since there's been a king game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was that Nazgoth, that multiplayer game that was. Yeah. Mm. That but yeah. there I think was the these leaked are... Legacy of Kane three or whatever. Yeah. Like Soul Reaver three or whatever they were calling it. The, all yeah. that footage leaked out, got canceled. Yeah. You know, never came out. Yeah. But I also don't think I played them when they were contemporary. Like, I think it was a little after that, uh, like, these were things <coughs> I discovered later on that somebody showed me, too. So it was kind of in the middle there. Close but no cigar is a phrase that I made up that I just sort of Man. like to. Really? You go over two really solid yeah, phrases in this podcast. Yeah. Wait, are we going to are we gonna do a, a holy chip shout out? Uh, you go ahead. All right. Sure. So you know, there's a series on YouTube that we've been uh, a series of <laughs> yes, one that's video. Right, one video that could become two. We are. I near 5,000 views away from getting to make a near. second one of these uh, and getting to play. Was it Air Zonk? I don't even remember anymore. I think Air Zonk uh, is the second game. Air Zonk is would be the second All game the Turbo Graphics 16 games. Holy so Chip series. Please go to YouTube and find Holy Chip and watch us play Aero Blast. How many it's part of the game scoop? How many views are you at right now? Uh, we're right 10, around 10,000. Yeah. If the video, said 15, so they don't make get? another until the previous video gets 15,000 views. We've and the been, first video is at nine, ten thousand 10,000 views. <laughs> yeah, so. so we've just been asking every few weeks for people to. Limited, this, we did this limited one Desire to watch people play TurboGrafx-16 yeah. games, I think. Well, let's be fair. Maybe limited desire to watch us play TurboGrafx-16 no. games. Also, download, if you download multiple browsers, you get a couple of views. Yeah, that's true. That, uh, well, that's very true. No, yeah, I, I do think that that might be a market that in America never really did have a chance to flourish, and it's too bad because there's so many good games. That's true. And if you all watch them, then we get to make more videos and show them to you. <laughs> All right, that's all the scoops we have for this week. Thank mm-hmm. you, Justin. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Marty. Mm-hmm. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out. Bye.